Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rangers of the North. This is a Lord of the Rings One Ring uh, 5e edition game sponsored by Free League Publishing. Thank you so much, Free League, for sponsoring this amazing story set in Middle Earth. I have this amazing and tremendous cast in front of me, and we cannot wait to tell the finale of this chapter of the story, not of the whole story altogether, um, but this little, this little snippet this little bad boy. And I want to jump right in because we have a lot to cover in two hours. So um, I'm going to get my cast to introduce themselves and then uh, we will, we'll jump right into the story. Um, who, uh, Katie, Katie, Katie. Hi, um, I'm Katie. Um, I'm playing uh, Gilly. Uh, she is a, uh, uh, I forgot how to talk. Sorry. I just went out of my head how to use my words. Mouth Let's go. I think uh, <laughs> playing a goth it. elf, doing goth elf shit. Um, yeah, I'm not. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to talk about anything else right now. Uh, over to you. Uh, fantastic. Um, how about JJ? Hi, everyone. I'm JJ. I'm playing Kiana, the human barbarian. Woo. So short and sweet. I was not prepared. Uh, I appreciate that so much. Um, Jazz. Hi, I'm Jazz, and I'm playing Hero Ren, or Hero, or Ren. Uh, the, the, you guys are also the, quick. What okay, Anita. Yep. Okay. Anita. Um, I play Guzdox. Uh, Guzdox is an orc and a scholar healer. Back to you, Sarah. And finally, to our producer player, Ark. Hi, I'm Ark, Arcanian Ending Everywhere. I am playing Pen. Penirian, who's our Gondorian noble captain, who's been back at home for an episode. I love that. My captions are going to pick up uh, my my microphone is going to pick up everybody else's captions tonight, but I'm going to move my speaker further away and see if that solves it. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Sarah. I'm your lore mistress here for Rangers of the North. Arc, roll our credits. <laughs> Everyone, I really hope captions just picked Anita's last. Uh, <laughs> I hope that I hope so much that that is what happened. Um, oh, it, it did. Let's, yeah. Let's enter <laughs> our world, shall we? We are in Middle Earth. When we last met our our fellowship, they were most of them had left the fairly protected um, heart of the Mirkwood Forest and were making their way south towards uh, the marshes. And they were in search of something, someone, some spirit. They weren't sure, but they knew that it wasn't going to be good. They met a, a very cool tree along the way who helped them find this cave entrance to the Hope Leecher's Lair, which is where we spent the majority of our time. Our heroes found a malevolent force and they found the remains of an older human. Then they also found that the malevolent force was not willing to be contained in this space any longer. And using a connection that it had started to form with Gilly, it made its way into the corporeal form to their not amusement, to their horror, perhaps, the fellowship realizes that they have let this spirit into the real world, into this material plane, and it quickly leaves them behind. It steps out of range from them. It moves quickly into the darkness where it all but fades from vision. And there is silence that echoes through this cavern. 
but I don't want to start with them. I want to go back one chapter before to where we left Pen in the Mirkwood forest. She was on a hunt to get her to her family as quickly as she could. Her sister, at the very least, was in danger, potentially her mom, her other siblings. The portent dream had told her this, but now it was time to go and protect her family. She maybe unwillingly left the protection of the fellowship in search of a much higher calling of fellowship that she needed to attend to, which was her family. She rode south. It took days. R riding hard. The horse was exhausted. So was she. But she did make it into the town, the city, actually, where her family lives. Pen, as you rush through the doors of your family home, what what is in your mind? What is in your heart? What what are your fears? What are your hopes? Oh, um, my fear is based off the dream. So some kind of sickness or death that's spread among my family. I want to see them. I want to hear loud sounds. My house is always filled with all of my rambunctious siblings. Like I want to open the doors and have that like warmth and sound envelop me. Um, and I just hope that I'm not too late to intervene on whatever's happening here. You make your way through, and even before you open the door, through kind of the open windows, the um, kind of light, almost linen-like drapes that usually cheerfully decorate your mother's kind of front living room window, the windows are open, and the linen drapes are waving outside in the breeze. And it is through those open windows that you can hear your mother wailing upstairs. Things are not well. And as you rush in and rush up the stairs, can you give me a perception check? You said Ooh, earlier you didn't get to roll yet this campaign, and we have to solve this. Eight. An eight. <laughs> you rush. You are the, the essence, the definition of speed. As you rush up these stairs, it doesn't even occur to you that this house is filled with healers, townspeople, gathered relatives, including most of your siblings, um, all of whom have this very grim look on their face. And you, you miss all of it in just needing to be at your mother's side in this moment. And as you burst through the door, she, almost as if she knew that you were coming, her hand just reaches out. Her face is buried into your sister's side who is laying on the bed. And she just reaches her hand back and like tries to grab for you and pulls you to her side and like hugs you as she's just beyond consolation into the side of your sister. You see now taking this in in the moment that your sister is in bed clothes um, your sister usually, would you agree, is usually quite a, she's quite orderly. She's a little bit snobby. She's, everything has a place. Like, I don't want to say she's one of those people that wears the, you know, like when you have socks that have like the days of the week and she's always wearing the right day sock on the right day, do you know? Um, but she is very fastidious in this way. And she's wearing bed clothes that are at least a few days old. But the more concerning part is this tarnished, almost blood red from the rust, stained crown digs into her skin. It should be big enough. It It is clearly, you know, um, in the style of a more masculine crown. This was a crown for a king. Um, but as it weighs onto your sister's head, it doesn't just stop where it should. It, it, there is a weight that pulls it down. Um, and you can see like, like the skin starting to bruise after a couple of days, um, around her forehead. My sister, <laughs> um, definitely holding my mother's hand and like ghostly pale looking at this. And just thinking, like, 
why didn't you wait this cursed object that we've been searching for of course you found it first what are, has anyone tried to remove it what your what's happened your mom responds to you and just like a new clutch of sobs catches in her throat because it's been a while since all of her children have been at home and this should be a time of celebration that her that her little chickadoos have come back to her <clears throat> but it's not in this moment this is this is the worst reason to have your kids return home and your mom's worst fears are preying upon her and and as your shift and your focus turns towards your mom she now you can tell has aged a decade in it's only been a couple of months since you've seen her this experience her her skin is pale and sallow who knows when the last time she has eaten is there is flies buzzing around some food nearby um it is clear that that taking care of herself is not is not where her brain is right now and she she her voice catches multiple times as she tries to tell you we i i heard her collapse I heard the thud and by the time I came in, it was already, it was, it was, none of us can get it off. We've, we've had the healer, we've called for the wizards. Um, we've, we've consulted with Lord Elrond. Nobody can get this off and we don't know what is going on. Um, She, her hand grasps even more tightly to yours. And any attempt that you make to like touch it, she tries to pull you, like she's not interested in this thing potentially consuming anybody else's, you know? And she's, yeah, she's inconsolable. Um, is there anything that you want to, to try. I mean, she's, she's, she's your mom. She's a little bit older than you. You can, you're probably, you're a warrior. You're a captain of Gondor. You could definitely overpower her if you wanted to like try anything. So I want to give you that, that choice of what, what do you do in, in this time? I think having learned and having heard the song from the Ents, like, I know that this is magical in nature and not something I can just brute force. And I know that like my mother would have brought in everyone she could possibly think of for her kids. Like to all her faults, she would not stop at anything to help her kids. So um, I think all I would do is share like, there's a song that I've heard and it speaks of the Hope Leacher. My companions I've been traveling with we're searching uh, the layer of the Hope Leacher to hopefully find answers or stop this from happening. I've been having these dreams of late darkness and death and prophecy. Um, I don't know how to help, but I am here for you. Ah, I was muted. As you speak the name Hope Leacher out loud, the candles in the room flicker. The crown, you hear your sister. Your sister's not passed. Your sister is unconscious, un, unavailable to communicate in any way. But as you speak the name Hope Leecher, your sister kind of groans in pain. Um, and, and there is this shadow that kind of passes over the gems that are encrusted into the crown. Um, your mom laughs in the most like macabre way, just under her breath, like, the hope leecher as if there would ever be hope for our line. We are, we are cursed. 
and I never thought it would take my children. And as she speaks, your mom has never really been one to be overly pessimistic, critical, yes, but pessimistic, no. And as she speaks, there is almost this, maybe it's because she's parched. Maybe it's because she hasn't been sleep, obviously sleeping well or, or eating or drinking. But there is this almost gravelly sound that catches along with her, with her words. It's time to face the legacy of our family change our stars and make up for what's happened in the past. We can't avoid it anymore. It's here in front of us. Your, your one hand is being grasped by your mom. But in this moment, you feel a little bit of warmth, barely, on your other hand. And as you look down, your sister has reached up and grasped you. And your mom just stops for a second. This is the first time that they have seen any reaction from your sister in the few days that she has been in this condition. Then we're on the right path and hope isn't lost. Give me a, there's, there's, mm, I wish there was like a leadership check. Give me a, a charisma or an insp or a persuasion. 18. 18. I got charisma. You got <laughs> Not charisma. very wise. But, <laughs> but in this moment, the wisdom of what you're saying. Yeah, you haven't always been the one to make the wisest decisions, but you haven't had to. You're the fifth child of a failed line of, of once kings and queens. You are fine as long as you don't bring like international shame on your family. You know, it's fine. Um, but in this moment, there is this kind of almost turning point, I think, for Penn of like, this, this is my legacy too. I, I have spent some time trying to go and forge my own destiny and trying to forge my own name, but this is part of my legacy and I need to be a part of this and I need to own up to this too. And in this moment, you, the candle stopped flickering and a calmness almost settles as your words are starting to be absorbed. And you hear a voice from the doorway. This is one of your brothers. And he, he says, and how would you have us do this? What, what, what could we do to, to deal with a legacy that, happened before mom's great great grandmother was ever born what can we do now there's you you're talking in riddles and you shouldn't give mom hope this is cruel of you oh it's such a delight to see you brother always bringing in cheer wherever you go um there is hope i have companions i've been traveling across lands hearing songs drinking to those songs a little bit. Um, but I have friends who are more attuned to those type of things and they are helping us while I'm here to attend to the family, um, seeking out answers, possibly more lore history than I can understand. Um, some of my friends are Elvish and have long histories that they have been taught. Um, another friend is barbarian who's connected to the wood and introduced us to great and old creatures who lent us a hand. Um, I think the only way I can help is by sword, as you like to point out, but I do have friends in the world 
and I don't think that they would leave us in our time of need. And as you say that, one of your halfling siblings, half halfling, quarterling siblings, <laughs> kind of pokes their head around your mm, grumpy brother. And um, this 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 sibling goes research. Well, re research. I, I've been helping Tilly with the research for months. Um, I, I I've got all of our notes. If you think that would help. I've looked through it, but I just, I don't think that I've seen anything. And I mean, even if I have, I'm not really smart like Tilly. And she, you know, she's been studying for this her whole life. And the quarterling sibling as halflings do will tell you the whole story over the course of six ales um, if you, if you allow them to, um, but they offer to bring you these notes and to, to sit down with you and kind of read through them and see what Tilly may have discovered. Yeah, this is one of those where I just like start walking in the direction where I think they would keep things and they can just keep talking as we go. And then like once I have the notes, I can they're just still talking as I'm walking away with them kind of <laughs> moments. And your grumpy brother, for what it's worth, grumpy though he remains, does kind of follow along behind the two of you, stomping a little bit loudly, like making it clear that he's not the most pleased to be dragged into this and that he doesn't think that this is necessarily a worthwhile venture, but he'll be a part of it. Um, and, and the two of you spend time looking at this, spend time doing research. Um, do you, do you do that in kind of the family room? Do you stay with your mom and your sister? You have probably, you, you know that you've got probably a day's lead time on the rest of the party on when they would be at the Hope Leacher's Lair. So I want to know, what are you doing in this day? Um, I don't think Penn is good at like sitting in a room and just holding someone's hand. Like she has to be doing something. So she would definitely take this to a study and start like research again is not <laughs> Penn's thing necessarily. She did not like school. She liked swords and making friends. So um, she probably takes it off to a side study, just somewhere quiet and kind of away from all the people in the house and knows that like her mother and siblings are there to support her sister. And her job is to kind of dig through this and make contact with her, her friends as soon as possible, see if they've discovered anything. All right. Well, in that case, um, why don't you give me like a, like an old lore check? Oh boy. five <laughs> you know what and i was gonna say i was gonna say before you rolled but i'm gonna give you advantage because the whole way since you left brie up until when you split from your party you're you were learning some of this lore you were you know you've you've talked with the oracle you have heard from your elven um companions i'm gonna give you advantage on this roll Great. Um, hopefully that helps in any capacity. Oh yeah, nineteen. <laughs> See, I also look. had my sister takes really good notes. She's very meticulous. I didn't have to work. She that. does. She does. And and your your half halfling sibling um, also is very fastidious in like the way that they tell the stories of things reminds you puts you a little bit at ease, right? It reminds you so much of the of the traveling that you've been doing in the Shire um, and in um, Eriador. And, and when your mind relaxes a little bit, you start to put some of the pieces together. And your sister had been doing an impressive amount of research. And part of the research that she uncovered was um, that it seemed like Anithius to to the writings of the historians at the time of the of the court historians had once it once it became obvious that the kingdom was going to be lost not lost but like destroyed through his power crazed actions and he had become increasingly um 
um, paranoid and increasingly cruel to others. And as the kind of outer villages started to join with the other neighboring kingdoms, and that grew closer and closer over the reign of almost like it didn't, it didn't happen overnight. It was over 15 years that things got, went from like, this was a, a well-established, well-respected, well-loved kingdom. And Anithius himself was a king who people, the, the other, the other monarchies, the other um, village chieftains trusted. He was somebody who could broker peace, who could, um, you know, help settle um, differences. And over this 15 years, it was clear to everybody that he was no longer in his right mind, but nobody really understood why. Um, it, it was assumed at the time that maybe it was some kind of mental illness um, but you know, a king is a king, and there is no, um, there's no abdication. There's no like recall vote. That's not uh, that's not a piece of things, right? Um, of of the governmental structure. So when the final notes that your sister was able to find on King Anithius was that he had had a couple of days after the birth of his first grandchild, where he almost seemed back to his normal self. He seemed light hearted and easygoing and he was preparing a big celebration. But his daughter, it was his daughter who gave birth. His daughter was very ill. And before, um, within like a couple of days after giving birth, he, he, he went back into this very dark place um, when she became like when she took a turn for the worse, essentially. And he left in the middle of the night, fled. Um, and was never to be seen again. Now, your your ancestor, both her and her child were fine in the end, but nobody ever saw King Anithius ever again. And it, there were reports of him throughout kind of the Middle Earth over over the stage of a few years. Um, there is a note from Rivendell that he had visited there uh, looking for information on um, the plans of Morgoth and Morgoth's um, allies. But he wasn't being specific in what he was looking for. And so the elves were very tense at even having conversations around this and sent him away after after a few days. Um, and your sister Tilly found that the last known sighting of him was in um, the marshes near Swift Current, which is where she went and where your friends are arriving. As you are reading this, and you start to put this together, your friends, if if the camera were to pan, uh, your friends would be arriving in this, in the moment. And in this moment, if both cameras were up at the same time, where Gilly realizes that this spirit must be corporeal, must, um, must have some kind of physical representation, and I think, Katie, please correct me if I'm wrong, Gilly would have been willing to be that if it would have meant um, finding some more answers. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that the way that it all happened, it was like, it was pretty snap decision of like, this seemed to had to have happened uh, and in order to like maintain, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to remember like all the vibes of last time and I was so like in shock at the time, but I'm pretty sure it was like, the choice was either try to like, like keep them contained somehow, which didn't seem to probably work or, and then keep being possessed by them or like let them out so that we can destroy it kind of thing. So I think that was, I think that was what their decision was like, I don't know. And so uh, <laughs> let's kill it, I guess. Absolutely. And, and as, as this is all happening, the disturbances in the candles and the light and the, the shadows that played and danced along the jewels of the crown 
everything becomes very dark for a moment, almost like there's been a solar eclipse. The house becomes dark for a split second, and then things are light again. And not only are things light again, the crown starts to lift from your, not like weird, you know, um, I'm trying to think of that movie, not poltergeist style where it like hovers in the air. That's not what I'm trying to say, but like it, it doesn't dig in anymore, right? It's, it, it can be taken off. And in fact, your sister, as she struggles to sit up, her muscles are in full atrophy. Um, you know, like after you've had the really bad flu for a week and you just can't even walk downstairs, you know how that goes. Um, and what she can manage, what strength she has left, she pulls this crown off and you hear it clink onto the floor. Your mom, for the first time, starts to breathe again. A color comes back into her cheeks. She wraps all of you in her arms. But the camera can see that this moment, this momentary reprieve here for your family means that your friends are in great danger and that your friends have taken on this enemy to kind of give you the chance to to get your family free from from the hope leechers clutches in this moment and so we'll cut back to the cave where our friends where our fellowship is and you all are standing there the hope leecher ominously posed behind and above Gilly. Um, what in this moment are you all doing? Am I still on the wall? Yeah, I think so. You're, you're like Spider-Man <laughs> yeah. style. Spider yeah, yeah, yeah. Style. But, but your daggers are crossed. They're that around. way, yeah. Oh boy. That's probably fine. But Gilly is free from its control now, right? Um, I would you would you like to find out? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, uh, right now Gilly and Guzdox are just deep in a hug, hugging yeah. it out for the first <laughs> time in this dank ass cave. Um are we still yeah, hugging? It's, it's like, oh, this yeah, is still guy hugging. One second, one second. You feel yeah, cold. We have like a little flashback, and now we have a flash, flash, present, flash, press, Just, flash, present. No one's flashing. It's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta, you you can't just jump right back in. You gotta come back and like, it's a little yeah. bit of a montage. Yeah, of course. Of nice, like, beautiful zoom yeah. transition. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you. and you're all there as as the hope leecher now in corporeal form towers above and is starting to move past but not move through which is probably great right um uh guzdox and and gilly who are bound tightly together in this moment um and and uh jj kiana what is kiana doing jazz um, what what do we have going on for Harrow? How are the two of you reacting in this moment um, to seeing this now completely disentangled? It's not like the Hope Leecher is stemming from or or like connected to Gilly anymore. Um, this is now a very real enemy that is in your space with two of your friends dangerously close to it. Uh, yes. Um, well, I do think that Harrow, um, looks at Guzdox and Gilly hugging and feels a little thrill of jealousy because that's my best friend. Okay. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. Um, it's you fine. Alright, <laughs> 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 whatever. You don't need me anymore. That's fine. Dang. Um, <laughs> I so it's like a it's like a half second of like well I'm, I want a hug and then she instead focuses on the immediate threat 
Yeah. <laughs> well, does she I'm though? So tired to be jealous. Does she? Um, as this moment of jealousy reverberates through your mind, no. damn this very corporeal oh, no. being who is looking for a potential noble is he is the beguiler of kings uh -oh. Damn. Um, <laughs> is <laughs> eyes flash the, the, this character this creature this spirit this wraith wears a dark hood and and so far there is nothing really there's no facial features that you've seen but these very pale amber eyes flash and you see almost the barest of an elongated ear from under this hood as this creature turns to you and whispers to you in, in high Sylvan, in the language that was used during high ceremonies, right? Um, almost reminds you of one of like your favorite uncles in just the 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 depth of character there is a almost a kindness to it as this voice says my child you are not like the others there was never going to be anybody who could love you and respect you in the way that you deserve, come with me. I can make sure that you get all that you desire. And I'd like you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Can I, can I, is he saying it out loud? Um, do you, would you speak hi, Sylvan? I don't know. I do not know. I, I don't I think it matters. I don't think it matters what he's saying to her. The fact that like, he's saying something and turning his interest on her. I think that like Gilly's insight is enough to know that like, I don't know. Oh, I just want to, I just want to oh, use my song craft to give her advantage. <laughs> um, what, yeah. what I'm in this moment that Gilly hears a very similar saccharine sweet voice. Yeah. Like I know what he's up to. He did it to yeah. me. Earlier. And, like and, I think I know what's happening. <laughs> and like your, your stomach drops, right? Yeah. Like when, when you have broken up with somebody and you haven't seen them for months and then like you show up at the same Starbucks and you like hear them and your <laughs> voice just, your stomach just drops, you feel sick. Do you know? Like that's- well, okay. Oh yeah, I was just having a nice I'm not trying to read moment. Somebody I'm, like, oh. I'm just trying to give examples here, okay? People, I'm a storyteller. Wow, you broke Thanks, up with Sarah. me literally two seconds ago and now you're hitting on my best friend? <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully Tris is disrespectful. Disrespectful, I mean, I'm um, just- I'm just waiting on Kiana's just waiting on the sideline to beat his ass. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, we, yeah, you got up. this. I just want to see if I pass. I just want to see yeah. if I pass. Kiana Ooh. is and like, Kiana sees this physical manifestation and like hears the ground crunch beneath these, these robes yeah. for the first time. And Kiana's like, gotta limber up, gotta yep. stretch yeah. all yeah. the muscles because this is gonna be quick, but it's gonna be fierce. And she, like I can see Kiana doing like a full calisthenics like yoga warm up before getting ready to do this. Be yeah. like, oh, they're, they're also, Hold on. isn't Ren doesn't Ren like have elvish resistance against charm or something? I don't know Is what elves do in this use? game. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not a charisma saving throw, though. It's a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Can I? Can I do a quick thing to uh, make that Yay. better? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, uh, I was trying to find a good one. I wrote down like I so I spent so much time writing down all of these um like bits of poetry from like Tolkien's novels, uh, wow. to like so that I would have a good one for each thing, and I don't have a good one for this. So oh, sorry. uh <laughs> um I'm just gonna uh, uh uh i'm just gonna turn to her and um like uh, sort of extract myself from the hug a little but still leave a hand like on guzdox um but then like turn to face her and like um i'm gonna start singing that that melody she was singing before 
Um, and uh, I'm not going to do it now because I can't remember it because that was 10,000 years ago. But um, uh, she's just going to sort of like, like, I think Gilly's singing voice is like a lot like lower and more sort of like gravelly than like the high elven voice and stuff. And so she's just going to kind of like sing her like low gravelly version of that uh, while like making eye contact and being like, yo, with me. Um, right. And then, yeah, you can you can have advantage. And this this moment of of connection, this moment of like, there was definite this pang of jealousy. It lasted for just a second, but it was enough for this creature of malice and spite to grasp onto uh, and to start to call to you. Um, it, it doesn't take a lot for darkness to find a foothold at this point in Middle Earth's history. Um, and so, go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw, but. You get advantage because okay. the power of fellowship. Yeah. Okay, I have to choose which dice I want to use. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. My list is not very high. Oh boy! Hey, I rolled. <gasps> I rolled an eighteen. Yay! Yay! An eighteen. So, I, so does that pass? That was a better question. It does. <laughs> it okay. does. Yes. Can I? Um, can I say what I? Can I say what I say? Please do. Okay. I kind of like for half a second, um, I have like my eyes locked on this entity um, because the whispers are so sweet and so enticing. And then Gilly just kind of like steps in between and goes like this <laughs> and is singing <laughs> and, and my eyes clear and I go, oh, sorry, my high sylvan's a little rusty. And then I'm going to rage <laughs> it's not it's not exactly what it is um i'm going to use gleam of wrath um it basically just says as a bonus action you can make a melee weapon that you are weeding and wielding in dim light in a radius equal to its reach so i i do have a rapier i don't think that i use it very often but i do have it um right. and it starts to glow at my side as i pull it and i just point it and i said and i just say Okay, Kiona, it's yours. All right. Uh, give me, give me a, um, roll, roll your attack. Let's see how this goes. Oh, I thought it was, I was just prepping, but yeah, I can, I can do it. I could do it. Sure. There's do no way it, this is going to go it. terrible. Do it, do it, do it, do it. It's my rapier. I have to look. Oh. Lamau, I am not in the correct area. I'm sorry. Hold for two seconds while I get my ish together. That's oh, there I, you know what? This is my fault because I told everybody we're not gonna really have time for combat tonight. And then <laughs> I immediately like when I combat, you know so it happens on. sometimes. It's, it's, it's okay. All right, cool. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure because I don't really know. Oh, I ooh, I got a 17. 17. You lunge forward with your rapier and it finds purchase. Whoa. You knew that your daggers missing was some bullshit before. And yeah. this just kind of confirms for you that <laughs> if you you don't even practice with this rapier, this is decoration. <laughs> like it is. <laughs> Listen, it's not even it's not even kind of real. You think that your parents had just hung it above the the thing for, you know, decoration, but uh -huh. it finds something real to to hold on to. And and as it does, there is almost this like horrible sucking sound. Uh, and as you withdraw it like a black oil, like like very old dried blood. Um but still, I don't want to be too graphic, uh, but I would really love to be very graphic because that's who I am. Um, it. It, is, it is still Do in it. liquid format, although the color would suggest that this should be well past that stage. Um, and um, JJ, what yeah. in this moment does Kiana do? Um, Do I not need to roll my damage? Oh yeah, of course. Please go ahead. <laughs> no, you hit though. You hit. That's all you need. To really do. quick. You did. You did. You did. I did hit. That's why. That's why. I, you know. 
Oh, oh, oh Max! He, he's dead. Damage. Um, so that's no, it's 12 points. Ooh. But it's radiant damage um, because of my gleam of well, that Love is that. beautiful. And on like a general scale of like one to three hundred and seventy four, he looks like twelve percent um, not there, or Holy you know, twelve, 12 points less than that. He's maybe at like three hundred and sixty two on a scale of three hundred and seventy four. Awesome, maybe. we're totally not going to just die a at random all. All number right. that I could throw out there. Um, JJ. What, what is Kiana in this moment? What is Kiana feeling watching the, these very tender, sweet things with this bad guy here? Um, Kiana would most likely be like feeling like, oh no, the homies are in danger. Um, because you already know that when the soft ones turn up, it's time to turn up. Like, we, we got to get lit up in here. So if they wilding out, I got to wild out. I mean, that's just kind of how Please that's just kind of how that's just kind of how the the vibes go. So um, I'm definitely going to go ahead and um, swing at it with my axe. Like, you know, make sure everybody else is chilling kind of out of the way. But yeah, no, I'm going to go out with my axe and I'm going to add... Um, because I have the Warden Oath Hunter, I'm also going to have a uh, Foe Hammer, which means that I can roll one additional weapon damage die if the creature is below its max hit points, which, thanks to um, little homie, it is. So my Elf homie did did what they needed to do, so I need to do what I need to do. So, yeah. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so... Can Ren's nickname please be little homie? Little homie. Like in the group. <laughs> Ren's, Ren's my, my very noble parents balk at that, but yes. The I little love homie. It. No, I feel cool. like you kind of do too. Like you're I'm a big tall girl. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm not little. You're you're little. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so I don't think I have any. I think it's just a flat roll, right? I don't think you add anything to. Yep, yep, go. Yeah, okay. So that would make it a. Oh, I rolled bad. It's a 10. A 10. As you kind of push Guzdox uh, and Gilly closer towards um, Harrow to get them out of the way, you um, try and keep them clear of your space as you across your body slash your axe towards him. Um, the Hope Leecher grabs your axe Great. and it starts to crack and like the wood handle where it connects to the metal fitting of the axe head, you can hear it creaking under his grip. Um, this is a man who could make like apple juice squeezing an apple, right? Like this, this dude has, has a, a brutality to particularly close quarter combat. Um, and you're not letting go, I would assume, of no. your axe. No. And he is not letting go of your axe. And he pulls it towards him, pulling you closer and closer until you are so close that you can see features under the mask that are almost whisker-like as this kind of snout comes out gleaming in kind of the bioluminescence that is in this cave and these orange eyes flash for a second and there is this moment where you are not in a cave fighting the hope leecher trying to trying to help your friends you are the you are back at a time when you were face to face with a wolf and you were in great danger and others were in great danger and you were smaller and weaker than you are now. And in this moment, the, the, the snout of this wolf almost smiles as very human words come out and they say, you couldn't help anybody then. You can't help anybody now. And 
thankfully you are well beneath people who I would deal with. And he, he like holding on to your ax pushes you against the wall and moves past you and starts to disappear into the inky blackness of the cave heading past you all towards the exit. Dang. Wow, what a bitch. Um, <laughs> uh, excuse me? God damn. Okay, so. I mean, unless I'm rolling something. Wait, don't I have. Um... We both have... have extra attack if we, if you're thinking about Warden, because I forgot about that. <laughs> Not that it matters, you know, <laughs> it's 300 it something matters, yeah. points. Well, and I think let me, we're level five. I think, we, I, think we're, I think we're, for the story, I think we just need to let him go. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay let with me, that. Yeah. And, and let me say, like, I think that there is this um, Gandalf fighting the Balrog where it, we're going to, we're going to cut to Wayne's World Fingers, cut to this really amazing montage of, of the four of you chasing this, this almost shadowy inky uh, there's this liquidness to the figure um trading uh trading dagger throws and it um you know pushing uh catching things and dropping them onto the floor um as as it you guys will get close and it can repel you and get away and for days this chase continues out of the swamps past uh bewildered and too slow to keep up um very righteous and dude uh who is concerned Ooh. um <laughs> but cannot keep up with you all as you mount horses and go fleeing after this creature um and and uh into the scrubby bushlands uh into the pine forest up and over the mountains that separate where you are from where this creature is is heading towards and you all the longer that this goes on you all know where this will end this is going to end on pen's doorstep and as as you all are for days making your way um over the mountains through the beautiful windswept hills of rohan south towards the gleaming white city um of Gondor, you are all exhausted and wearied. And as you approach, you you have fallen behind a little bit. It's just at the edge of your vision um, that you see the doors, the giant wooden, well-armored fortress doors of, of this great white city like pound open just splinters flying everywhere as this creature is emboldened and empowered but you ride hard and you make your way in pen there has been maybe a couple of days that your sister has been sitting up and eating your family is well things seem to be fine but you haven't heard anything from your friends and I don't know. How does Pin in this moment reconcile the fact that something clearly has happened because these things don't just reverse themselves like on the power of homework? Um, <laughs> so what is what is going through Pin's mind? I think like at first, yeah, she's just happy to be with her family and like, okay, maybe they defeated it and everything's fine and they know where I am so I'll hear from them like soon they can send a message even ahead if they're coming here where to meet them and then like the longer it takes the more pen again not good at just sitting and waiting just wants to take action and do something we'll start to like plan um options of all right if they come in this way maybe i need to travel this way and meet up with them or maybe this is where they went or maybe they're still at the lair and they're trapped there and they need me and it's just like kind of going through that list of let's plan on how we can meet up with them again and what um what 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 indeed what um steps does pin take to like start to prepare herself to 
potentially leave her family or gather some protection? Like, what is Pin doing? Um, okay, first, that crown is not staying here because clearly <laughs> my sister is way too invested in what that means for the family and probably has some like optimistic ideal version of how we can cleanse it or something, which is just like, nope, you're not allowed to touch this ever again. You almost died. Um, so trying to figure out how to take the crown with me and hopefully maybe it needs to go back to the lair or maybe my friends have found something, um, but it's not going to stay here where she will definitely touch it again. Um, yeah, other than that, just being really well fed <laughs> in the meantime and enjoying a little bit of downtime. And um, as you as you do take a couple of days to rest, to eat well, to ensure that your sister and mother are doing so also, um, although her ex-husband, the halfling, uh, has come to like make food for everybody and, um, you know, they've stayed friends. They were they are much better friends than they ever were married couple anyway. Um, and he just lives like down the street, you know, like they're that uh, couple and he gets along with her current husband and like it's a whole thing. Um, very there, you know, half, it, it's hard to, it's hard to stay mad at a halfling. It might be hard to marry one, but it's hard to stay mad at one. So anyway, um, they, uh, they're, they're having their whole moment and like glad that all the kids are around. Um, and as, as you have like grabbed this crown and like shoved it in a bag to get ready to take it out of your family home and stuff, you don't let that bag out of your sight. And you go to move it one day because you, you you probably bring it with you from room to room. Like you don't, you're not taking any chances that anybody else is going to touch this thing. And it has largely fallen out of the interest of the most of your family. Um, but you're keeping it beside you. And one day you go to, to lift it and it's quite heavy this day. And it's then that you hear this explosion and the bells start to ring as... Um, there is some kind of attack. There is something happening. You hear the the um, stomping metal feet of soldiers as armor clinks through the street as rows of soldiers are kind of lining up to take defense. You're, you're not the wisest, but you're not... You, you know what's happening here in this moment. You have precious little time to determine what your next steps are. Great, cool. <laughs> um, oh, man, having the crown here feels like the worst option, but also not defending my family feels bad. So against my me arc better judgment, Penn would probably ride out with the crown toward the danger, uh, be the heroic person that she is she is a hero she is a captain of gondor and as you pull do you, do you keep the crown in the bag or are you are you gonna carry it out and I'm try and like that thing get out of here <laughs> you keep it in your bag you sling it over your shoulder it feels heavier than your entire set of armor um and you go rushing out uh headlong to try and meet this thing um, and and to keep it as far away from your family if if this is if this is what it's coming after. You make your way down through kind of the steep and winding um, roads that make up the Great White City uh, of of Minas Tirith, and you make your way down um, towards the entrance. You can hear the shouts and clanging of um, armor as sounds like a, a whole host of invading force as you see a, a soldier go flying um, over one of the rooftops. This, this creature has picked up um, strength along the way as it has wear, worn down your friends chasing it, as it has come across other um, hapless and helpless creatures on its journey uh, to take um, the hope from them. Um, your friends have seen the trail of devastation of, of that it has left um, as it sweeps through the land. Literally, its name comes from the power that it wields in this 
in this plane. And as you make your way down, you you see the the great wooden um, gate doors are blasted open. You see riders heading towards you, but this ominous black hooded wraith-like creature stands in front of you. And as it's being attacked and speared and slashed at by the guards of the city, it's like a fly buzzing around its head as its full attention turns to you. You are further down on the air list, but you're the one who currently has the crown. And there is an inevitable connection that happens when this creature has had to be connected to this particular um, item for so long and, and almost, and contained by this item for so long that it, it, it will come after your family, but first it needs to ensure that this prison never um, can exist anymore. And it, its sole focus is on your person, but not even necessarily on you. Its sole focus is looking at this. It's, 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 it's driven towards this bag that you're carrying. And you have a sit, we're not going to roll out three rounds of combat, but you essentially have about three rounds before the riders that are drawing ever closer, who you identify as your friends can get to you. What are you doing? Um, okay. I would first call out to it and be like, foul creature, you are here for me. This is my legacy and you will not take it from me. Um, even though I don't really want the crown, but I don't also want him murdering people. So <laughs> we're just gonna try to like PVP this guy, distract him a little bit. Um, Penn's main thing is that she's got a big long sword. So she'll probably draw that out um, much like an AON moment of like, I'm no man, just, I'll get you. Um, and then uh, that, just, that, that's yeah. word for word exactly what she says <laughs> <laughs> um and then essentially as a captain you would get extra attacks like a fighter so it would just kind of be taking like two swings per round um and kind of holding her other types of abilities until her team is with her since that's and where you she you so launch into great battle great combat with this as it swipes away your advances a few a few land for sure um there is there is kind of ichor this it's the first that you're seeing it but uh um harrow saw it on coding her rapier um there uh that this kind of inky blackness this deep beyond oxblood crimson red um spills onto the streets as the guards have not stopped attacking it either and it does not seem bothered and every time that it can get close to you all it's doing is is trying to knock you down knock you prone uh grab the bag open the bag it is not you are engaging in combat with it. It is not necessarily engaging in combat with you. Um, and the, the guards become, um, it, but it does kind of knock people back. And as your friends ride in to the main courtyard here at the entrance to the city, um, you all can see that there are medics treating guards and there is this kind of semicircle that have uh, almost enclosed this space, but it is very clear that they also don't want to get in Penn's way, that Penn very clearly knows uh, what she's doing in this moment. And you all ride in um, and the few who kind of clock you are like, elves, uh, uh, a far north, um, a woman of the far north, and a masked creature who is is hiding in a cloak. What is this? And they they don't know whether you're friend or foe. How do you all enter this city and and try to gain entrance to this space? 
We're friendly. I feel like people are too busy to be worried about us. For real, for real. There's a giant shadow monster. Can we just like ride we're in and do help. what we okay. need to do? <laughs> so Absolutely. You're, you know, there's not many, um, but there are a few that like their attention starts to turn because if this shadow creature is the start of an attack and there's more coming, um, that would not be good either. So they don't want to like leave the flank open. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't all just suddenly like turn to you all. Um, but certainly as, as Harrow um, kind of raises hands and says, we're friendly um, and, and speak so clearly in uh, the language of, of man here in the common tongue. Um, th there is kind of this moment of like, all right, I mean, bad guys, like the the raiding armies are usually like, we're here to kill you. You know, like they're usually a little bit more aggressive. This is an awkward, like, um, what awkward. what are the choice this in the split second? They're like, okay, I guess. I'm still and charismatic. <laughs> sure, absolutely. And and there is kind of this regality to you that you all look exhausted. Um, you don't look like you guys are well rested, ready to come in to like overtake the city with this thing. Um, and and it's very clear that you have all been through something yourselves. You guys have been trading blows with this thing over the course of multiple days to get here. Um, Pin, as you as you go to swing one more time down, you hear the the ever present, like the the very close by clopping of horse hooves as your friends kind of come and join in um, this space. What all, without going into a combat round, I'm going to ask. What is it that you all are doing? And I'm going to go with the most physical um, kind of melee fighters and we'll go from them first into kind of the ranged and the magic um, wielders. Yeah, it's good. If that's weird okay with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> get, I'm not purposely saving Katie to the end because she texted me and said, please save me to the end, but I am. So, um, <laughs> well, because I, I don't know what's going to happen and I don't have anything else to do. So I'm just going to. No, wait no, it's fine. It's fine. We love first. this. Um, Kiana launches off this horse, right? Yeah. Kiana, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. No, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm launching off the horse. The horse hasn't even stopped and I'm off. Um, ready to go and i'm taking i mean they kind of they didn't completely break my axe which is fine um because i'll bare knuckle it if i have to but yeah no he's um he's getting the hands so yeah i'm gonna take my axe uh for my three my three moves i'll take my axe to him all those three times and pin as you as you see your friends what what is this feeling for you I would definitely greet them like, hail, we are here together. It stands no chance against the great fellowship. Oh, wow. um, you have lifted the curse for my sister and I owe you my life. It's come for the crown around me now. Let's fight. Um, and for teaching purposes, I probably use like Bright Blade, which gives you guys advantage on attack rolls um, yes. from my wonderful speech and then she really does just stay this formal, room. no matter what's happening, hey? No, like, we'll trump me around her. She said, like, hail, friends, you know? Yeah, that, she sounds like that a man energy. That man energy saying. right here. Like, Look, I had a really good time at parties, okay? <laughs> yes, is so, so, yeah. <laughs> we were so tired. We'd been riding for days, and then just, like, this speech, like, I, know, I feel invigorated. Like, like, I got hey. advantage or something. <laughs> Let's go. Right. And, and as, as Penn, there is kind of this familiarness to Penn's formality that you all have come to associate with one of the things that maybe at first would have been like, this, this guy really? Uh, but now it's like, no, this is our guy though. So nobody else gets, this is our guy. Nobody else gets my guy. our guy. This is our, this is ours. She's ours. And um, you, you particularly with Kiana, I think, um, doesn't necessarily come around to be at the side of pin, but stands flanking the enemy as the two of you just tear to shit, uh, whatever blows can land. Um, 
Ren, you are a slight bit more stealthy um, mm -hmm. and you come in with a different physicality that can be both melee and range um, yes. and, and sneaky, but also, um, you know, a little bit of the psychological from time to time. What is Ren doing to add to this effort? Well, I would like to say firstly that when we arrived, I would have hopped down from my horse and I would have very delighted thrown my arms around Penn and given her a kiss on the cheek because I'm so happy and relieved to see her. And it's As she's so like long. hacking away. No, it's before she does it. It's before she does it because yes, that's hello. so unsanitary. <laughs> So like gorgeous elf jumps off her horse and kisses the woman in armor. This is like the <laughs> it's like super a gay, gay except, except <laughs> I'm <laughs> not old enough for that, so no. But yes. <laughs> um yes, and um yes, and then she essentially you get the the bolster from the speech, and then she sheathes her rapier, which has done her great good. But because she, so basically, what Gleam of Wrath does is when her when her people were um, assigned essentially to keep the wild the wilder woods from um, infecting essentially the rest of the land, the surrounding lands. Um, they have faced uh, uh up until that point had faced a lot of like a numerous hardships and in order to overcome that would uh, essentially rage would become vengeful and angry and it's not something that um she can maintain for a very long time because she's just she's just a sweet girl and she's not she's not an angry person so with relief she will sheathe that um rapier again its dimness fades and instead she pulls up her hood and she flips out her daggers that she retrieved and she <laughs> and she will take advantage of the fact that she is quick and she is stealthy and her two very powerful friends are holding the attention of the hope leecher and instead will um stab where sneak he is attack. least expecting yep sneak attack sneak i will be i will be using my two attacks my sneak attack and i'm too fast for him i will just get in and out he won't even know i'm there he's like oh that hurt who was that no one wow i wonder where that little elf went you don't and know. and and as this um very very stinging little uh, mosquito just continues the onslaught that has been started by Penn and kiana um guzdox you are I don't, I can't imagine that this is the most comfortable space being in the high, one of the, maybe the biggest city of humans that exists in Middle Earth with tons of armed guards right at your fingertips, essentially. They're not, their sole focus isn't on you. They might not have clocked you yet, but I can't imagine this is comfortable. Yeah. I think if Guzdox had time or energy or anything to give to anything except there's a hope leecher, uh, Guzdox would be very much distracted and shaky, but they have been chasing down this entity for three days straight. Uh, they have, like, been wounded and, like, dealt blows to it. This is a thing that, like, songs are written about. This is, like, something that... Uh, this is something that nearly destroyed the world. Uh, and I think, like throughout the past couple of days, like this experience of just like chasing it down, it's given some focus and some purpose. And I think that as like, we finally ride into the city, it has finally stopped. It is making a stand to like attack something very nearby. It is for the first time stationary, and as 
Ghost Docks dismounts the horse, I think, feels stone underneath their bare feet. And now I'm gonna try something weird, Sarah. And you can tell me if it's if it's not if it's not a thing, but so you know how you also like gave me a druid thing, right? And how you said you can try to cast level you can try to cast spells if you want, but it'll hurt you and you're and it's not we're not sure how it's gonna work. Uh so there's this there's this fifth level spell called Transmute Rock. And there's a there's a lot of rock around. It is way above my level. I understand that. I know this. However, if I can like transmute from rock to mud a 40 foot area, just like or just an area around the hope bleacher, like that can go 40 feet down. If I can try to like sink the hope bleacher into a mud pit and then cast the spell again to transmute mud to rock and just like bury him in a little in a Bear little that. rock tomb. Um how how would that work, Sarah? Um <laughs> you focus on this. First off, I, I want to also call out something that you said of like, you have given chase for three days. That is not unusual for orcs to be driven to have to like do these hard marches to go and, you know, do, do uh, raids and pillages and things like that. There was almost a level of familiarity, right? Um, that that connected you of like, oh, they're now experiencing something that I've experienced. And there was this sense of kind of a different level of fellowship that forms amongst like we hear it around like combat troops um, that that this deep and distinct connection forms when you are put into danger with the same people um, in in a very, you know, uh, very unique way, you you kind of trauma bond in a way. And and there is this this instinctual that you cannot even necessarily understand how this magic would begin to work or how it, how you would be a conduit to it but you are not only a representative of yourself anymore and so my question for you is does guzdox wear the wove like the when you left the murkwood the sash was left for you by the ints of woven together kind of branches and vines and wood that that demarcated you as kind of a healer as as part of their um group. Do you, have you been wearing that this whole time? Oh, that immediately went on. Uh yes. Yeah. I get from the aunties, of course. <laughs> and as you don't even know where to begin to access this magic or how this works. There is this moment of um, kind of heat all along your body where this sashes as it springs to life. And it's not necessarily the rock itself that begins to transmute, but that nature itself knows that you have proven yourself an ally and responds to your need in this moment. And this um, sash sinks roots deep into the ground between the, you know, between the tiniest little slivers of flagstones where normally kind of roots uh, like weeds would grow. These, these roots sink deep and you are anchored to the spot now, but you feel the movement as these roots continue to grow and burrow under and burst up, grabbing the hope leecher and anchoring him into place too. You can't move, but neither can he. He is stuck. And as long as you are maintaining this concentration, as long as you are maintaining this will to stop this without necessarily almost like a conscientious objector. You're not trying to do harm. 
you are trying to cease harm from happening. And that is this connection to nature that allows you to use this without having to take a shadow point um, of being able to make this old connection to the natural world. The guards that weren't paying attention, there is a certain amount of attention being paid now in respect of like, oh shit, this is maybe the coolest thing that's ever going to happen. Um, if the camera were to pan up, the the great white tree of Gondor would also be shooting blooms off of its almost long dead branches, tiny little buds um, of this very pale pink start to appear on on the tree itself as you root the ho the hope leecher into place. Gus is the new king. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Gilly, in this moment, the, the ground has like exploded up as these vibrant leaves and vines have entwisted and ensnared this creature that came so close to doing that to you. Um, your, your friends are battling it. You see uh, Harrow um, dancing playfully like a child, um, you know, playing with like a ribbon string almost, um, just attacking it from every angle. Pin uh, holding with only like needing one hand because the other hand is kind of keeping the bag kind of back is just uh, slashing and cutting and tearing into this. Kiana at at some points just leaves the ax embedded and just like punches the shit out of this thing. Um, is using both hand, uh, weapon and fist in this moment. What is it that, that Gilly, who bears some weight of responsibility for making this thing corporeal, yeah, 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 yeah. how does Gilly <laughs> respond in this moment? Um, I think that like, while all of this stuff is happening, Gilly is like having a moment of, um, I mean, we were, we were in the woods for a while where, uh, she couldn't connect to like seeing the spirits around her and everything. And then we kind of went to like a big scary cave and then got a bit possessed and then we're on a big chase. So I think she's felt a bit disconnected from the spirit stuff for a while and so i think now that everyone's back together and everyone's doing all of this like i don't think that gilly is a particularly good fighter that's not really her thing it's like always been like assisting buffing i'm playing a bard uh, <laughs> and so uh, watching her friends like kind of do all this stuff i think she's just taking a moment to like center herself and start connecting once again with like all the spirits um and she's I think she's also angry, um, which is not really a thing that she's does often. I don't think, um, I think like, yeah, like I think pretty, pretty accepting, pretty loving person, but I think she feels like this thing that she was so comfortable in. This was like, her, this is her whole identity, right. Is her ability to, um, have relationships with these spirits and, and help them reach the other sides and stuff. This one tricked her and, that made her doubt herself and also let this thing loose. And now her friends are in danger and that's kind of her fault. And so, uh, yeah, that sucks. So <laughs> she's, uh, I think she's going to, she's gonna like take a beat and just try to try to figure out, I think is also inspired by the like, watching these these trees these these uh encase the the hope leecher um and i don't think she's confident that all of us could probably kill it but i think she's going to try to uh tap into her abilities of putting spirits in places and um so this is fourth level spell <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's called banishment um and that's what i want to try to do but i'm also going to um color it with the speech craft um and so i'm gonna i'm gonna step towards uh pen or gilly's gonna step towards pen um and maybe touch the like the bag holding the the crown um and just stand like right behind her and uh i'm gonna sing y'all a little song uh, uh, so she's just gonna like stare this dude dead in its creepy amber eyes 
um, and say and sing. Get out, you old white, vanish in the sunlight. Shrivel like the cold mist, like the winds go wailing out into the barren lands far beyond the mountains. Come never here again, leave your barrow empty. Lost and forgotten, be darker than the darkness where gates stand forever shut till the world is mended and hopefully that will make him go poof <laughs> as your voice starts to sing this new epic that definitely in Guzdox's words songs are written about this moment and and this song will be sung in taverns all across the lands for many 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 years to come there is also this righteous anger this this anger of somebody who was used and abused um and and is getting a level of revenge in this moment of but not just for self for kind of the greater good. Mm -hmm. And if, if the others were looking, it's a good thing that you're standing behind Penn because sorcery is not well respected in most places. And, and as much as, you know, the, the fellowship has come to understand Gilly, it's a good thing that Gilly's not immediately in the eye of everybody. But speaking of Gilly's eyes, they are <gasps> milk white in this moment as this Ooh. strong connection to the, other world is forged and as this film um kind of covers over it's not that it stops you necessarily it's not like it's a blinded condition mm -hmm. it's almost like true sight mm -hmm. because what you see is that there are chains on coming off of the hope leecher Mm -hmm. And that it's not that they are bound to the hope leecher. It's that the hope leecher carries these chains and you start to see these other spirits of the kings and queens that the hope leecher had ensnared over time. Oh. And there's one in particular that stands very close, oh. looking so sadly at who the child who is his great, 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 great granddaughter. And this very kind looking but but sad uh and worn old man in pins unmistakable color um stands there and you hear him say this should never have been your legacy to overcome and if i could take this back i would and i am so sorry and you to his view you almost pop up out of nowhere um, because as you start Hi. to forge that connection, yeah, you're there all of a sudden. And he looks at you and there is this kind of moment of concern of like, oh no, another one. Um, yeah. The hope leecher is taking more and, mm -hmm. and I can't let this happen. But you know that you can make spirits corporeal should you choose. You know what the formula is now. Mm -hmm. And you made a mistake in making the first one corporeal that was had ill intent. But as you start to sing this song and as you rally the spirits, not only of the physical world, but of the, the supernatural world also, these souls who look so, the best way that I can describe them in my mind is the Little Mermaid cartoon of like the little eel souls that are in mm -hmm. Ursula's lair, you know? Yeah. They just look so shriveled as to probably the wonderful kings and queens that they were that led their people. There is a vibrancy that comes back to them. They almost were like sieged, they were almost like leached of their color almost. Um, and there is a, a, a color and a vibrancy that comes back to them as these great warrior kings and queens, um, dainty, uh, frail, um, you know, probably never worked a day in their life. Like this, the Hope Leacher ensnared all kinds of, of leaders of people. Um, and they 
all of a sudden realize that their collective power, emboldened by your song to your friends, you are emboldening the spirit world too. And they start to turn on him. And as you cast banishment, I think how we flavor that for this world is not that is not that there's another plane for this creature to go to, mm -hmm. but that they reclaim and pull him back to their side. Mm -hmm. And so as you start to open this door to give them some space, he is weakened by the onslaught of physical attack that he has received. He is rooted into place and cannot fight back or get this crown. And as you are like holding on to the bag to try and find power, there is this warmth from the crown itself that it contained him once. It could contain him again. And yeah, I think that was the idea. I was like, I don't know if it should go back in the crown because that's that wasn't great either. But I don't think that I have any power to like put it somewhere else. So like get back in your hole. <laughs> like, <laughs> and as you as you draw this crown out, its attention flashes to you. Now you are you have the thing that it is that it is scared of that it yes. doesn't have that that leeches its hope right mm -hmm. it, it is the antithesis it is the thing that took its power and um as you as you're holding on to it the power of your friends working together connected with kind of this other larger force that is unseen by by pretty much everybody else they will do this level of banishment for you. Um, they will, as as good leaders should, understand, and as Anithius did in his last moments, that it wasn't enough that he no longer exists. He needed to, he needed to contain this thing, and it was through his sacrifice of like, I will go, but you're coming with me. And, you know, if I'm going down, you're going down with me, kind of this, this, this emphasis that these spirits turn on this thing that has ensnared them for so long and swarm it. And the crown itself, the gold almost starts to melt from it as the heat um, gets, gets hotter and hotter. It, it starts to drip and deform um burnt my hand probably that's fine oh yeah you're you're definitely gonna that's okay Gus oh, will have let's you go. In just a minute. it's yeah. fine um and and for those of you who can only see the physical world what you see is <laughs> i was gonna say i was like am i just standing there staring at this thing that's happening and no one can see it except me nobody else gets to yeah. see this experience that you oh. do and there is this but there is this beautifulness of like no, but this is my job. This is what I'm here mm. to do. I'm okay with this. I don't need the glory. I need to know that the right thing is happening. And for those there. of you that can see the physical, you guys all see uh, the 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 roots binding the hope leecher, and then the hope leecher start to compact and start to almost like implode in this way that we have such a clear, beautiful canon reference as to how wraiths. Um, become undone when a woman steps in, when a marginalized gender person steps in to, to take this power um, and do this. And this moment happens. And there's this moment of silence before this explosion of air, the, the, um, the roots holding him in place blow open, scattering pieces uh, to all the corners of the courtyard. Uh, Guzdax, you, you feel this like freedom from the rooted, uh, spell that you're trying to hold on to. Um, and, and you're all almost kind of blown off your feet. I think Harrow is, is light and nimble, um, and can kind of, you know, dance it off. Uh, I clamber onto and the And Kiana's back not Kiana. going anywhere. I say you all like kind of get blown. Kiana's still punching this thing. Like Kiana's not. You keep going until you know that it's over, right, Kiana? Yeah, yeah. I don't I yeah. don't know that it's I don't know that the thing is happening. So I'm just <laughs> until you're punching air. Until Absolutely. somebody's like, you can stop. <laughs> um and, and it is just it is, pat, 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 you can stop. Yeah, and it's getting physically smaller under your your um 
you're just you, just this onslaught, this this rage that you have. And Pen, you you feel the weight lift from your bag immediately as the crown comes out. Um, and it frees you to now have two hands. And you can just go to town. I I feel like there is this ethicalness, this, this like, yeah, you, you Pen has been willing to give up so much in this moment and and to protect her family. And as Pen goes to strike, um, I is it, is it, is it this? Is it like what is what is Pen's final strike look like? This is like the force of generations <laughs> coming down on this man. Um, so as much as it's like a two-handed strike, it's probably more like cathartic than actually powerful and just like a deep scream and like slash. She won't go like into the face or anything, AO in style. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and there is this moment where you pierce what should be the heart of this creature, which has long since shriveled uh, and and um, the metaphorical heart uh, of this creature. Um, and in this moment, as this kind of explosion of air happens, a quiet settles into the into the into the courtyard. And the the branches are scattered, the robes fall to the ground. What little physical remainder exists is there. There is also a puddle of gold just to the side of where Gilly stands as the crown kind of melted under the heat of this spell that was probably at the very stretches of um, you know, I, I told you all that like magic always has a cost and the cost was like this physical, the cost um, was my hand. <laughs> well, and you know, that's, you, it's you, made you, of gold now. It's oh, there's a little, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to need uh, some looking after. I want to go from this moment in the very short time that we have left. And I want to skip ahead a few days. If you will all. Um, allow me to. Please. Um, our fellowships, our fellowship find themselves on an elevated platform, a stage for guests of honor. Monarchs, stewards, and even a wizard sit in comfortable thrones, but you all sit ahead of them, being far more important to this proceeding. People stare up at you, exchanging whispers and pointing. They are odd to be in your presence. Looking out across the crowd, you see a gathering mass of celebrants, mostly human, but delegations from all free peoples of Middle Earth gather in this square. Looking around, this place is old, and while it has been recently decorated, a heaviness still lines the cobble streets. Time has not been kind to these buildings, and the stones they are built have remind you of the grain death that you have seen in recent times. But this is a coronation, and spirits are high. Laughter floats on the wind that causes the banners to flap and wave, almost as if they too celebrate this long-awaited day. And the delegations of other races begin to arrive, elves tall and proud, a sea of pale blue, gray, and green fabrics drape their lithe bodies. Their faces are unreadable to most. Rin and Gilly, I ask you before, I've asked you before when I've said these words to introduce yourselves, but now I ask you to share with us how this chapter ends for you. So, do you want to make a bet? Like, how long do you think these elves will stay here after this coronation's over? It's because a, it's a suck bet. I really don't want to take it. But why? Because, because, because nobody would take it. Oh, because, because they're obviously going to leave immediately after yes, you're done. Yes, immediately. Exactly. You're absolutely no fun. <sighs> hey, is your mom here? Because we she didn't. Oh my gosh. So, okay. Is she I've here? Been looking, all, I've been looking all day she's... and I haven't seen her yet. And okay, because she's gonna be like... really mad. <laughs> I know. So, I'm just, so if you see her, if you see her, you have to run. No, so that I can no, no, you need run. to let me know so that I can run. And then run. run. And then we run. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> okay. But you know that she's gonna see us before we see her. It's, she has it like it's uncanny. <laughs> I know. I know. It's like she has eyes in the back of her head. Yeah. 
Um, cool. I how's, your, like... how's, your, how's your hand? Oh, it's pretty gold. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Like pun, pretty gold. Oh, no, it's like, you know, most, there's like, it's, I would imagine that like, she probably would have had it seen to, but then would have thought it was punk as fuck to like, leave some of the gold like embedded in her hand. So she'd be like, who's in tears of the kingdom now? Oh, okay. Uh, but that, that, no, no, that's so not, that's so not sneaky. That'll just reflect not... the light at every turn. I do it in her eyes. Oh, <laughs> ah! I also try to do it to Guzdax a little bit. See if I can like, <laughs> just like shine it over there. <laughs> All the like, clues is not mirror? gold, motherfucker. Oh my God. <laughs> and and what what is going to come very quickly? What is going to come next for, for Ren and for Gilly? I'm going to hide from my mother. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, I I I had a lot of fun. I think this is great. I'm ready for our next adventure. I'm yeah. I'm like, yeah, I survived that. I didn't need any help from my parents who totally weren't watching over me the entire time. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, I think I think Gilly's like gonna want to wander, but also like if these people like I don't think that Gilly would want to stay and like help whoever is running this country i guess it's probably not pen being coordinated yeah, this no. time so like yeah down down to wonder if we're gonna wander but if pen needs to like stay here and do shit i don't think she wants to like hang out i think that she wants to go and explore maybe like i think she kind of want to see if um she could learn things from uh more from gus docs because i think that they also did some cool magic shit and they would have probably had a debrief about that and um uh i think she feels uh, still quite upset about the fact that like everyone in that forest was like scared of her or sad for her or something and so I think that she would want to like try to see if I don't know take me to the woods let's do some magic bullshit I don't know <laughs> Ren comes to you I was gonna Ren's say obviously invited. Um, Ren goes where Ren goes where Gilly yeah. goes they're like attached yeah. to the hip so yeah so I think that's uh, I don't know I think we're both like let's go with the flow yep um, the most like calm elves, I think definitely there is also some like future communion with uh, our our buddy Mellow Tree Elf or Mellow Tree Ent. Um, like like there's just a kindredness of like chill, man. It's all gonna be okay, dude. Um, Can smoke some pipe weed with that guy. That sounds absolutely radical. He <laughs> grows some really great leaf. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Guzdox. You sit near the edge of the stage. A shadow falls across your body. Introduce yourself knowing that you are a guest of honor and the sash you are wearing shows you to be a person of particular power. You are a healer and the robes that you wear mark you as an apprentice of the old ways. And as you look to your left, a beautiful ash tree that you have become so familiar with um, has arrived and is there to take you into apprenticeship and to guide you towards whatever the next steps will be. So I ask you, what, what do those next steps look like for Gus Um, so yeah, Gus did like a fifth level spell, like a few days ago. Uh, Gus a lot of things happened back then, like probably at the explosion when the Hope Leecher was was banished, like the robe and stuff like blew back, the mask cracked and fell away um, and was probably like revealed in front of everyone, but probably passed out right after, just like woke up being tended to by human medics uh like it wasn't a thing uh which has it's just been a weird few days um but um i think like i think gustox is sort of like standing at the edge of that like you know that huge tier city we're probably at like the top tier for the 
for the ceremony part is probably standing at like the edge of that tier, looking down and just seeing that like space in like the center of town, like a little past the gate where they are still like replacing the stone, like where the mud and roots have just like come up. Uh, and it's just, um, yeah. And I also think the sash has like grown a little bit after that huge display. It's probably like a, um, sort of cloak now, just made of leaves and roots and whatnot. And I think that she's just going to, um, yeah, she woke up in a new world. And I think they are just going to look up at the stage, look to uh, the ash tree that has agreed to, um, that has like offered to apprentice me, um, and then look down and just see the free people, elves and dwarves and men. And is not going to see any orcs because orcs are not free people. And I think that Gazdox is, whatever the next step is, it is going to like be making progress to finding her kinsmen and trying to release them from the hold finding as many of her kinsmen as she can and try to release them from uh, the hold of Isengard. There is this, in, in years to come, there is this almost holy pilgrimage that your people who are longing for freedom can make where you have taken little sprouts from your sash, from your, from your cloak, from as it grows over time and, and great effort and learning, um, you, you are able to prune little buds and plant them and they grow into these beautiful trees of a very particular leaf shape and color that has meaning to your people. And you, you plant this almost trail that would lead anybody who knew where to look and how to look for it to a place of refuge that you set up deep in the heart of the Markwood Forest under the protection of a family of elves who have sworn you a little bit to secrecy. They approached you because you were friends with their daughter and they appreciate you keeping her safe, but they have granted you this very particular, almost monastery of refuge where your people will always be free to come if they are looking for freedom and a growing community um, thrives there over the course of, of the next age of Middle Earth from this trail of hope that you plant um, literally and, and metaphorically uh, from this from this crown and cloak. Um, I think Gustox will sort of like blink, squint, look up to the stage and Gilly is like flashing with the gold hand <laughs> and just like mutter to themselves, metal as fuck. Uh, <laughs> yes, literally. Literally, literally. Um, Kiana, your good time keeps being interrupted by children running up to you, asking to sneak a peek of your dagger that lights up randomly. Um, it it has waned in the days since the incident. It doesn't always glow. And you're not totally sure. Um, I think Gilly and and Ren would understand a little bit more about why its its glow is not 
it's not a warning of danger anymore. Um, the, the kind of vibrant urgency of the blue that it once was, was attuned to not just an orc, but the, the, the oncoming of danger. And that is not present in the group that you have. Um, and, and as, as these kind of roots of, of who, of who they are becoming settle into Guzdox and this plan starts to form of how they are going to create this future for their people, um, the glow will disappear over time. Um, because this is not a person who at any point could be dangerous anymore. Um, and, and the magic, I think the, the enchantment responds to that. Um, but in this moment, these kids want to see this blue glowing dagger because it is not quite as cool as the hand that has like this really delicate metal filigree of like the, the crowner, the corner of the crown, but also you have sticky buns. So you went out every time for these kids. Um, yeah. so I want to know how, how do you share how this chapter ends for Kiana? Um, <clears throat> I would say that between, um, the kids coming over and asking to see my cool ass, um, dagger that is probably not as cool ass as it was once, but that's okay. I'm still digging it. Um, I would show them, but then I'm also like, you know, drinking my ale and, I have a tray of sticky buns, but I also have um, like sticky buns the traditional way. But then I also have another sheet that's of a recipe that Kiana made that is like vegan friendly. And that's like specifically for my homie. Um, and it's like I have like I have it like split in half where I'm like, OK, this part is like. It's like instead of it being like like the sticky bun, it's like bread, but it's like I have half of side that's like savory and the other half that's like sweet. So like the sweet side has like a nice little like berry compote and then the other side has like this nice little mushroom sauce that I managed to make that's just like delectable. And I'm like, everybody needs to try these because I need feedback. So I'm like, rest new recipe, eat. Like I'm just, I'm just literally like eat and <laughs> telling everybody. Um, and of course I give, I give Gizdox some like eat. Like I, I need to know, <laughs> like I just, I need, I need to know if it's good, if it's good enough, what I need to improve. Like, but I just say all that in just that singular word of eat. <laughs> okay. Cause I think, I think at this point it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's, pretty well known that like Kiana's whole obsession with like sticky buns is not simply just because they're good it's because like sticky buns for her represents like a deep-seated like friendship that it's a, like it's a deep connection to those around her um, and it's a connection that she wants to share with people through sticky buns specifically so yeah <laughs> that's gotta, how what I'm figure out what a sticky bun is because we've been talking about them a lot and I don't know what it you don't is. know what a same... sticky bun is oh is no bun? is that different oh oh boy I mean is this not a thing in Canada listen they're they're not really <laughs> there there is like the little Debbie version that they sell at um like convenience stores but it's not the same at no, all as what we're same. talking about is it like but also Katie let me say that probably nobody else would know like what um what are the the little pies that are like butter butter tarts? Uh -huh. Probably nobody else understands what a butter tart is, True. but or like an Nanaimo bar, but mm -hmm. they're they're equal equal delectable equivalent. Equal, okay. Is it the same as hot cross buns? Hot no, cross hot cross buns are also not a thing here. God damn it! All right, well I'm just gonna Google sticky buns. Please carry on with the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please do. We will, in fact, Panerian. As your fingers drum impatiently on old hand-hewn wooden doors, they are split from inattention and weathered from the passage of time. You become the center of attention as you step onto the balcony of moss-covered stone, but only for a moment, because as you step to the side to take your seat, the queen of Anithius comes in behind you, front and center. 
I would love for you to tell us what is next for Penn in these moments, doing so with the understanding that you are draped head to toe in rich fabrics of your family's color, velvets and silks adorn your body. And there is a, there is a tightly fitted kind of metal bodice um, of armor that is, is new. It, it is unfamiliar to you, but you are not a captain of Gondor anymore. You, you are a general of Anithian. You are a high leader and you have been bestowed a great honor as, um, as would, as would be expected. This is a look befitting the coronation of your mother as the restoration of a line as the queen of Anithian. Oh boy. I'm so glad I don't have to make a speech again. The one in my dream was very upsetting. Um, in this moment, I would definitely, if I get time to speak, I would point to the heroes of the moment, let us all cheer for greatness and change in the realm um, against darkness, new hope as the seedling of Nimloth in Minas Tirith has bloomed again. Uh, a new age has started for all of us, especially here in Anithian. Um, Pen, oh boy. As much as being in general is pretty sick, um, she also just, I don't think curing Hope Leecher has quite stopped her wanderlust or interest in the world, like saving a halfling in our previous season to defeating the Hope Leecher in this season. Both are equally important in her mind to the world and to people whose lives that she's changed. Um, and any call to her for help, she would answer. So as much as she is at home, if it's a peacetime, she receives notice from any one of you or from your family or friends, she would definitely uh, take to arms and, and be there in a moment's notice. And those moments may yet come to pass, but as we close this chapter for this particular fellowship, I remind our viewers and our players of the final two stanzas of the Song of Anithius. Shadows dwell where light grows weak, and kings easily fall to treachery's guise. But hope endures if the righteous will speak, the realm reborn a monarch arise. Hope remains a flicker of light, a fellowship of the true and just. To reclaim the throne, to end the night, companionship must guide the trust. And as we close this little chapter, I just want to say thank you to all of you and to all of the audience for being with us. And somebody please do your outro because I'm just going to cry. Oh! You can cry. Don't cry. Oh, I'm Katie. I'm out trying. I'm really sad about it. That was amazing. Um, you can find me on social medias, I guess. Um, uh, Instagram and Discord are the places I am the most. Um, it's a critical spark 20. It's probably right there right now. Do it. Be my friend. I like talking to strangers about all kinds of things. Um, that's made me sound okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's me. Um, I am, I think this is my last project for a little while. So I'm going to enjoy a hot second of not being online all the time. Um, but, uh, I'll be back. This was sick and um so much emotional damage remember we were just gonna be hobbits and brie doing like hobbit bullshit this is way better i loved it <laughs> um yeah thanks everybody for being so awesome and welcoming to a new human also and over to you next person who i should know by now because we've done this twelve thousand times who's next i don't remember <laughs> Do we have an order? I don't know. Someone go. <laughs> oh, no. What up? I'm Jazz, also known as Ginger Scurio. I'm the everything. So I just got a blue sky invite. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set that up in a second. Yeah. I'm also on TikTok. You should, you should follow me on TikTok. Um, let's see. You can find me here at Queen's Court Games, just hanging around. You can find me at. Did I say Queen's Court Games? You can find me at Queen's Court Games, just hanging around. You can also find me here at Girls Run These Worlds. Where am I? <laughs>
Um, it's been a lot okay it's allowed <laughs> i'm not gonna sit here and pretend i didn't cry because i totally did um you can also find me on other side of studios this coming fall and on maybe a couple of other places you know if you want to follow my social media you can check that out whenever i'm allowed to announce that um also if you guys like um writing and stuff like that or i guess reading for you guys if you guys like to, if you want to read something i wrote i guess i have a short story in an anthology called being ace it's this you can pre-order it now this is my arc it's very beautiful um if you pre-order it we also have uh cool stickers and and book plates and other things to give away you can uh go, i think you can find it oh gosh well i'm not entirely sure yet but it the if you google it it's being ace it's edited by madeline dyer and i wrote a short story so if you want to read my words you can check it out it should be out in october okay that's it for me I'm gonna choose Anita. It's you. <laughs> it's Anita. Hey everybody. Anita the lesbian on Twitter until it implodes and TikTok until that implodes. It's an apocalypse. You know the vibes. Uh, you can find me on Wednesday uh, this upcoming week at twitch.tv slash Fuska. Uh, we're, we're still in that demon castle. Now there are devils too. Mephistopheles gave us a contract and my wizard is morally ambiguous. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we look at the contract. Maybe, maybe the arch devil has some points. Find out on Wednesday at 7.30, I believe on twitch.tv slash Fusca um, and just Follow me on the Twitters and the TikToks uh, to see what I'm up to. With that, I will uh, pass it off to uh, Ark. Hi, I'm Ark. Arcanian ending everywhere. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. I love Lord of the Rings, and I love it when you DM. I have such a good time. Um, such a beautiful story, especially focused on my character that we had to create a whole backstory for, and it was so well done and including everyone else in it. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm the director of operations at Girls Write These Worlds. We have a zine coming out exactly one month from now. So check out Routines, August 24th. Um, I'm not in any other shows till September. So stay tuned and Girls Run These Worlds and my social media. JJ. Okay. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm JJ, and you can find me over on Twitter at JJ underscore Cray, or you can find me over here on Twitch at Bam Reaper 97 Let's see. Um, so you can find me uh, next Tuesday for uh, the season finale of Crime Solvers Anonymous over at Tale from the Table Studios. Um, we are basically playing... Um, adults who were once child detectives and now we're in a brand new mystery um lots of fun my character michael has literally just been um kicking ass so this is amazing um <laughs> so yes and then let's see next thursday you can find me over over at uh the last omnitech on twitch where um i will be joining their skies of Atenria um actual play so that'll be a lot of fun um I'm trying to think of what else. Um, yeah, and then sometimes I stream randomly. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, uh, this Sunday I will be doing uh, the Taste of Tavern, which is my TTRPG cooking show um, where I make recipes from TTRPG cookbooks. And we are continuing our journey in the Necro Nom Nom Nom, um, which has been a lot of fun. So <laughs> I will be doing that this weekend and also be streaming uh, the... Um, for Andy from the Lost Cave and Art, um, they have a brand new Kickstarter that's coming out. So I'm going to be reviewing their Kickstarter and that will be on Saturday. So yeah, if you want more details, you can just look over on Twitter. This has been amazing. I love this cast. Sarah, I love you. It's been a blast. And I hope everyone finishes watching this, goes out and enjoys a sticky bun. And if you don't know what that is, I hope you find out later. Okay, bye. Love you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I have been your lore mistress. My name is Sarah. I'm the CEO here at 
Girls Run These Worlds. Um, and we have so many uh, huge things. At first, I want to say thank you to Free League uh, for creating this supplement for D&D to make it accessible for people like me who um, that is that is the touchstone of rule set that I can that I can pull from. And thank you for allowing us to create such a beautiful story. Thank you for supporting marginalized gender creators um, and, and marginalized creators uh, in general. Um, and for those of you who don't know here at Girls Run These Worlds, we income share uh, and we income share evenly between all of our shows. So even though this show was sponsored, um, all of our shows, all of our creators benefit. Uh, and so thank you, Free League, uh, for being a partner. Uh, you guys are about to partner with us again for uh, two more projects coming up. We have another one ring, one shot of the actual one ring system um, coming up in August and then Alien Season 2 uh, coming up. So please go and support um, Free League. They have just been such great partners uh, to work with. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Free League. Um, stick around to Girls Run These Worlds. We will be doing three casting calls this weekend. Should I mention what they are? Should I just announce them here yes, and like it. not tell anybody else? Okay, yes. fine. The one ring thing that I talked about. Yeah, we're gonna, we're going to cast for that this weekend. We're going to be casting for a version of masks called Freezer Burnt. Uh, and we are going to be doing Fight with Spirit, which is uh, a dance competition that Anne Exo Girl Wonder here in our chat is going to be running. Um, don't tell my Discord because usually I do emoji hints, but I won't do those this week. Uh, so you can cast for those. We're going to be doing 12 shows in August and September. So there's a lot of casting. Casting. Follow us on all of our socials. Um, also, we have just released a whole bunch of merch. These glow in the dark, uh, these things. Um, we have some Girls Run These Worlds glitter pride stickers and holographic stickers. But we understand that it's not just girls and people who identify as girls who tell stories with us. So I also want to say Blurds, <gasps> which is Black Nerds. Uh, Blurds run these worlds, and this is holographic. Uh, so if you're interested in that, and also I have one, I, the camera's not really going to pick it up, but it says we run these worlds um, for people who don't identify yeah, do. uh, with intersections of womanhood. Um, so uh, we we have you covered, and thank you for playing with us. If you don't, um, we adore you, and we love the stories you're telling. Uh, if you would like to pitch us a story, you can do so on the Creator app, um, which is linked on our website. Our website has just undergone a revamp, so go check that out. Uh, purchase some merch. It comes from my physical house, so you'll get. A handwritten note for me. Um, we have some other merch coming up next week. Uh, haters are vulnerable to radiant damage. In case you didn't know, uh, we always sold it as a t-shirt, but I've just ordered enamel pins um, and patches that say that as well. So uh, you're going to be able to pick those up. Is there also t-shirts? Because I want one. There are the t-shirts um, come, come from a drop ship company and we're talking with a a different manufacturer to try and get some. So if you can hold off a week, maybe. Um, but if you really want one, let me know and I'll hook no, you up. No, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Maybe yeah. they'll be tank tops. Um, yeah, just let us know. Come, <laughs> yes, uh, come back tomorrow night. Mitchdom is is the cute little Hobbit series that I promised these guys that didn't happen. They're all little woodland creatures uh, and they're just little adorable hamsters, I think actually specifically. Um, and it's uh, run by Mo, who is also sitting on our council. Uh, there's Roll for Luck, there's Afterlife this week. We have an I Have the High Ground marathon that we've just announced. I Have the High Ground is a two person, like slow, sim slow burning, simmery tension duel game. And we have five very different ways that you can do it from clowns that are uh, to ex uh, lover spies, baking reality competition, um, wizard duel. Um, and there's another one that I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm really sorry. Uh, and um, Alien 2 premieres this week. Uh, Community Cleric is with Mo this week. Ballad of Conjurers on Friday. Um, and then Sharn is, you'll see me on Thursday and on Friday for Sharn, the Sharn finale. Um, Thank you all for being a part of this. Thank you to um, Girls Run These Worlds for helping produce all of this great content that we get to tell. Um, and thank you to all of you. We are going to go raid into another One Ring um, show by the person who's actually going to run our One Ring one shot. Um, so we're going to go raid into our friends over there at Nat One Fun. Thank you all so much for being a part of this this very special story to me and to this cast. And we will see you in Middle Earth soon. Bye.